in today's video, I'd like to discuss how deepening our capacity to hold space for all of our emotions helps make us better communicators. And it also deepens the relationships with our partner, with our family and with our friends. We'll look at consequences of suppressing emotions, four common mistakes men make when holding space, four effective communication tools to deepen empathy and understanding, and ways to help regulate your nervous system when experiencing the full spectrum of emotions. The more I want to become a self-led individual, I need to become friends with my emotions and deepen into my capacity to hold space for all of what's coming up through me. Because if I don't want to outsource the direction of my life and have somebody else tell me what I need to do, then I need to hone my capacity to be able to listen to what's moving through me. Because that's going to offer direction. It's going to tell me whether I'm on track or whether I need to make some shifts in my life. Being able to feel the full spectrum of our emotions and the highs and the lows and everything in between gives us a deeper sense of perspective. And if I am actively seeking to numb out the more challenging experiences, the more difficult emotions that are coming up, I can't just cancel out that lower range. I'm effectively also removing all the highest joys and the biggest potential that I can experience. Think about any time that you've achieved something that felt significant. I'm sure that you had to go through something that was challenging at first. And that is what offers significance to that more joyful experience. So if we remove hardship, if we remove challenge in our lives, if we remove difficult emotions, we rob ourselves of the joy that we most desire to experience. For much of my life, I've had a really hard time being able to name and identify and sit with the different emotions that were coming up. I really lacked tools to be able to regulate my emotions as they were moving through me and also had a terrible time being able to communicate vulnerably and honestly what was happening inside of me to other people. I have associated me being vulnerable with the potential to be rejected or abandoned. If I show too much of myself, that might risk pushing others away. So rather than face that fear, I had spent much of my life just pushing it deep and dealing with it myself because that felt safer. And to deal with that, I had sought out many of the distractions and numbing tactics that I had mentioned earlier, smoking too much pot and diving deeply into screens or watching television or occupying myself just by being too busy. There were so many ways that I didn't take time to sit with the full spectrum of emotion that was coming through. Not only did it make me more reactive rather than responsive in the moments, and I'd be led to act on the triggers of what's coming up and externalize blame and project wrongness on other people. It also compromised my ability to really be able to listen to somebody else and to really be able to hold space. I spent much of my life internalizing other people's pain and trying to fix people's problems whenever they brought them to me. And to be honest, this is still something that I'm conscious of and still trying to work on and become a better listener rather than come in with some kind of quick fix. It's changing for me because I see the value in being able to feel that full spectrum of emotions and I want others to be able to do the same. I often think back to an experience I had as I was moving through a really challenging breakup and my friend Olivier, who I had shared a lot of these challenges with, had called me one day and knew that I was really struggling and said on the voice note, I wanted to call and wish that you were doing really well and doing great and not feeling any pain. And then I took a breath into that and realized, I hope you're feeling the full spectrum of emotion. I wish 
you courage and I'm here for you and I support you, brother. When he said, I hope you're feeling, that gave me permission internally in that moment for all of the spectrum of emotions that I was experiencing to be okay. Not like it was something that had to be solved or that there was something wrong, but all of it was welcome here. And I still think of Olivier's wise words often and try to embody that when I'm holding space for others. When I think of holding space, I think of creating a container, creating an environment where somebody can be held, somebody can be listened to and bring all of their challenges, bring all of their successes, bring all of them into that space and be heard fully without any judgment. I'd like to talk about four common mistakes that men make when they're holding space, when they're creating an environment to be able to listen to somebody else that compromises a sense of safety, that compromises trust, and ultimately blocks empathy and connection. The way it's been taught to me is don't frap. So F-R-A-P. The first is don't fix. The person who's bringing a challenge to you is not broken and they don't need to be fixed. The second is don't rescue. There's no need to deny or downplay or minimize their experience. We don't need to tell them it's going to be okay in that moment. That can feel really dismissive. The third is don't advise. There's no need to give advice to somebody else. My suggestion when you feel the need to do that is to look in the mirror and give that advice to yourself first. That's probably who needs to hear it most. And the fourth one is don't project. Don't project your own experiences, your own judgments, your own thoughts onto this individual. Often these approaches can be counterproductive and even harmful. They can rob somebody else of their own experience and take away their own power. There's something so healing simply in being seen in what we're bringing. Knowing that somebody feels our struggle and can connect with us is a lot of the time all we need to move forward. That alone can take such a weight off and we don't need somebody to diminish our pain or solve our problems just to know that somebody sees us and is there for us can do so much. And four techniques you can use to deepen a sense of safety, connection, understanding, and create more empathy with the person that you're holding space for are one, to listen. Keep your mouth shut and just take in what they're saying. Don't think about the different things you need to do later today or be distracted with all the different thoughts and all the different possibilities or all the things going on really try and take in what this person is saying. The second is to reflect. I often use the term clarify and verify. I will try and mirror back what I'm hearing somebody tell me, but in my own words, this is what I'm hearing you say. Is that correct? Does that make sense? Is there anything you'd change or add? This starts to allow them to take their power back and say, yeah, that actually really makes sense. Or no, that part doesn't. I would change it this way. And that mirroring as well. I'm not sure if you've ever experienced somebody mirroring something that you've said back to you, but it also provides an opportunity to take your initial response actually deeper. The third would be to affirm. Really empathize with what that person's going through. Recognize how hard it must be, and especially if they're communicating certain words, saying, I'm hearing that you're saying you're really frustrated. And that experience must be really challenging. That kind of connection, that kind of empathy can really create a deep sense of trust, of safety, of being seen within that relationship. And again, just takes so much weight off the individual. And the fourth thing is to ask. Ask if they need any kind of support from you. If there's any way that you can help lighten their load for them. Not in a way to fix or resolve anything, but to be there for them. 
if you really feel like you have some kind of feedback or advice, again, I would say tell it to the mirror. But if it's just gnawing at you that you need to share something, ask that person if they're open to a reflection or open to some feedback because that gives them power. That gives them autonomy to say yes or say no to that experience. While these techniques are quite simple, they're not easy to implement in the moment, particularly in more challenging conversations. Maybe if there's some confrontation happening and somebody's heated, or maybe if there's a really intense emotion coming up for the other person, it can be hard to stay regulated. So practicing these communication techniques in low stakes situations is really helpful. And this is the kind of work that we do in men's circles, that we do at men's retreats, where we practice conflict and confrontation and sharing challenging emotions in controlled environments where we can practice staying regulated in our nervous system. That can really sharpen us for when the unexpected moments of life come up and we're forced to deal with that in the moment. Being an effective communicator and an empathic listener requires us to be in touch with our own emotions and to be able to create a capacity within ourselves to hold space for that full experience within us. It's important to start to develop a self-awareness about the emotional triggers that we hold. What stimulates certain challenging emotions within me? And what past experiences might those be linked to? The more I can develop awareness of this, the more I can develop a sense of compassion, a sense of understanding for an older version of myself that has a hard time and is getting reactive inside. So I can be with that reactive part of myself, but not let it run the show and instead direct my attention and energy to what's happening in the present moment rather than continuing to relive past experiences that hijack my present moment. Whether or not you're familiar with your emotional triggers, one of the best ways to maintain awareness of when they're coming up is to bring our attention to what's happening in the body. Notice if there's ever any tension happening in the chest or discomfort in the stomach or tightness in the shoulders or clenching in the jaw. And also notice the quality of the breath. Notice if it becomes more short, more shallow. These will be indicators that something is coming up for us and we need to bring awareness back into our body, back into our breath lift up the posture and relax the shoulders down and lengthen the inhalations and the exhalations and deepen the breath. These things will start to help us come back to be present with the person who's sharing with us. Mastering listening requires mastering emotional regulation. When I'm really listening to somebody and holding space, I have to have one foot in my own physical experience and one foot in somebody else's experience. So when they're bringing all of their challenges, all of the successes, the full spectrum of whatever they're sharing with me, I want to be able to listen to all of that and feel with it and empathize with that experience and recognize how my nervous system is doing in that moment. Am I staying regulated? Am I staying with my breath? How is my posture? Am I present and here for this? Or am I off somewhere else in my own experience? This is something that takes tremendous amount of practice. And again, doing this in controlled environments is where we can sharpen that. There's all kinds of ways that you could deepen into that. I recommend making that a part of your daily routine so that this is something that becomes practiced on the norm. And whenever some distraction comes in our day or some intense experience, be it our own or something that somebody is bringing to us, we have the tools and the capacity and the regular practice to bring our awareness back, to bring our awareness back into our body and know that we can regulate ourselves, that we can come back to a calm breath, that we can come back to a relaxed body and really be present with what's alive in us and what somebody else is bringing to us.
The key point I really want to drive home here is that feeling is healing. And the more we seek to suppress our challenging emotions, the more we're also going to put a ceiling on the joy and the happiness that we can experience in our own lives. So rather than seeking to numb, to distract, to avoid, to suppress, start to cultivate tools to be able to hold space for yourself. All of the challenging emotions, all of the difficulties that are coming up and surround yourself with people who don't try and fix you or diminish your experience, but allow you to be able to feel whatever is coming up and know that you're seen and safe and supported as you're going through those things. As you do that, you will become a pillar for other individuals. You will become a trusted resource for people in their lives that they can bring their experiences to because they know that they will be supported by you, that they will be safe bringing their challenges, bringing all of them to you without feeling diminished or shut down or like they're a problem to be fixed. I'm curious, what do you think are the most effective tools to help hold space, to deepen connection, to deepen empathy? Is there something I missed in this video or would you like to further unpack some of the things I discussed? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Stu Murray signing off and we'll see you again next week.